let's move along here. Let's move along. Let's move along. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the NFL trade deadline and kind of leading into that. Uh, let's talk about Tack McKinley because Tack McKinley actually had uh, so <laughs> he, he he took another step across that line. And this is what he had to say. Let me go back here and pull up this tweet because he had a little tweet. Okay. All right. So <laughs> to Karis McKinley. So this guy's been wanting to get out of, out of Atlanta for a while. He's been wanting to get out. Uh, and he went on Twitter five hours ago and he posted this. He said, these Atlanta Falcons turned down a second round draft pick when I requested to get traded last year. The same Atlanta Falcons turned down a fifth and a sixth round pick for multiple teams when I requ requested to get traded this year. <sighs> I only have 17 and a half career sacks. <laughs> clowns, clowns, clowns. So, <laughs> so this guy basically shit on the franchise that pays him money to play a game each and every week. You know, I'm kind of torn with this because, you know, honestly, I will say this. I've been in, I, I, okay, let me start with this. I believe in a player knowing their worth. I believe in a player using that knowledge of their worth to benefit them in any way they possibly can, can in the NFL, particularly because our careers are short. Our value will peak and fall even in an even shorter period. Thus, when you were at your peak, you must cash in on your value. You must understand your value and you must demand your value. Now, there's a difference between demanding your value and disrespecting the situation that you're in. That's where I uh, am torn with this because I feel like you were drafted by this team. You're getting paid some good money, some good, some good coin. And yes, the situation you're in does suck right now. But do you really believe that by complaining after the trade deadline that you are going to be able to change a thing about your situation? If the Falcons decided they wanted to cut you tomorrow, and you cleared waivers, you go back to league minimum. You go to league minimum on the money you can make. You then will certainly get signed as a minimum income player. You'll certainly get an opportunity to go out and prove that you actually can play. And really at the end of the day, you reset your value. You don't give yourself the best opportunity to be successful. That to me is, you know, that's just an idiotic move to make. Players do a number of things that I just don't quite understand. I don't understand. With this situation here, you are between a rock and a hard place. Finish out the season. Work with the team to get you the best deal you can to get out of town after the season. I don't know how many years is left on his contract. I would assume maybe one. Uh, you know, if somebody knows in the chat, let me know. I'm, I'm not, I, don't, I don't keep up with the Falcons like that. Uh, but I do know that as a player, as a former player, when I was in a situation where the Jaguars <laughs> – and I think I've said, I've talked about this situation a number of times with, with, with you guys in the audience. Uh, I was in Jacksonville in 2012, 2011, 2012 season. 
no, no, I'm sorry, 2012-2013 season. <clears throat> and we had Mike Malarkey. This guy's the worst head coach in recent memory in the NFL by far. I don't care what anybody says. Only person that might be worse was uh, the guy from Cleveland last year, the fat dummy. Uh, but, you know, I wanted to get out. I was like, I, can, I, I can't do this in this city no more. I can't do this with this team no more. We just went, what? We went uh, three or four, three seasons in a row where we lost out on getting into the playoffs in the last week of the season. So there was still hope there as a franchise to get over that hump and get into the playoffs. And then Mike Malarkey came into town, ruined the entire franchise. You know, I, ruined, I mean, partially ruined my, you know, I blame him partially for why I hurt my knee that season. And uh, it was a miserable year. It was a miserable, 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 miserable year, guys. Two and 14. And I was, I literally was on the phone with my agent. The moment that the season ended, when I knew that it was now or never, I never said a word. I never said a single word throughout the course of the year. Not one word about my situation, about how I felt, because how I felt about halfway through the season was, I want to be traded. I want to get out of here. But because I didn't want to put myself in, in, bad, in bad graces with the Jaguars, I didn't want to put myself in a situation where they would just, you know, sling me out to the worst, you know, team out there. Uh, and even, I mean, even though it wasn't, there wasn't too many teams you know, that were worse than we were, but it could get, it can get worse. Don't think it can't get worse. It can get worse. Uh, I didn't want myself to be in a position where they could look and say, you know what? Fuck this guy. Let's just give him away for a seventh round pick to whoever at the bottom of the rung in the NFC North or some shit. And that be that. No, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to continue to play. I'm going to play my ass off because I'm having a good season. But, you know, I'm hurt. I'm, you know, I, I'm there. They don't care that I'm hurt. I feel depressed because of it. You know, I feel like they don't really understand my value, but I was, but I wanted to be a good soldier, which is, is somewhat to my detriment. I wanted to be a good, so, a good soldier and I didn't, and I, and I didn't voice my displeasure, but that comes from an old school mentality of, in, uh, in, in, God, I hate saying old school because, damn, I mean, it was this was 2012. You know what I mean? Like old school. It's, it's not really old school in football years, but I, I definitely, you know, felt like if I can play, I'm going to play and I'm going to play, you know, as hard as I can. That's that's it. I'm just going to play. Um, So. You know, I shut my mouth, and at the end of the season, I was ready. To, I was uh, calling my agent up. Told my agent, "Look, if they don't fire this guy. Please tell them to request request to them to trade me to another team, because I still had uh, two more years on my contract. Two or three, I think two. I think maybe three more years on my contract, and." Uh, and I was like, there's no way I'm going to make it. There's no way if this guy is going to be here that I'm going to make it stay playing here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to be, you know, it's just not going to work. Luckily they fired him. Now in this guy situ in this, in this case with, with Takaris McKinney, you know, that is probably the route you should have been, you should be looking to take because you don't really have leverage. But if you are someone who the team respects and they know that you come to work and they know that uh, and they know that 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 they know you're frustrated and they know that you're you're being a good sport about it and you're not doing things like this and putting the team on blast and insulting the team that drafted you and pays you money then they may then the, then there's a good chance they're going to respect your 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 they're going to respect your hustle as a man and they're going to give you a way out 
that's that works for both teams. They're not going to just hand you over for nothing. But if there's a good scenario that can work out for them with getting a solid draft pick and, you know, they can get, uh, you know, they can get position coach, head coach, and GM on the same page on it, then boom, there you go. It all depends on what the team needs. It all depends on where what they can get for you. And if it works, boom, you're out the door. No, no fuss, no bus. And you, you're leaving on amicable terms. But right now, he does. there's no such thing as amicable terms for him. There's no such thing. No such thing. But let's go through this article very briefly. 25-year-old McKinley went 26th overall to Atlanta in 2017. Then you got three years in. Three years in. And, and I mean, come on. After a standout collegiate career at UCLA. Well, now it makes a lot of sense. UCLA. Hmm. McKinley, McKinley's first two NFL seasons were productive, but he dropped off significantly after that. McKinley registered six sacks as a rookie, followed that up with a career-high seven sacks in 2018. Over the past two seasons combined, McKinley has just four and a half sacks, giving him 17. <laughs> <laughs> giving him 17. Point five in four NFL campaigns. Damn, bruh. That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. No lie. <laughs> no lie. Uh and side note, I see you guys in the in the chat. Uh, I have a Switch. I got a PS4. I got an Xbox One X. I got a Dreamcast. And yeah, I think that's it. And I got a super rigged out PC, but <laughs> I digress. Uh, he only has 17 and a half sacks in four, uh, in four NFL seasons. That's rough. <laughs> four seasons, 17 and a half sacks. There are guys who got 17 and a half sacks in one season, and they do that almost routinely. So there are guys who were who have four times the production he has on average. So the question comes back to this. If you're averaging, and we're talking about the last two seasons, he has averaged four and a half sacks. You are completely, you have lost a ton of market value once you are that, uh, that inept at your, at your job as a, as a, as a, as a player who is, uh, as a player who should be a cornerstone of the defense, you are an underachiever. There's probably a lot of other things that you can look at in his game that you won't see on Sunday that contribute to that. There's probably things such as his work ethic on the field in practice, his work ethic in the classroom as a student of the game. Because guys who study their film, guys who actually study the game and understand what they're doing and why they're doing it and how they can improve it each and every week in the NFL, you see your production begin to increase. It's not an overnight thing. We all know that. But it's going to happen. It happens as you find a rhythm within that, that routine you build as a player. This is not something that just happens when you go out there on Sunday. So for him to have average four and a half sacks, he's clearly not putting in the work. 